On this third piece in this particular series, we're going to talk about computers and education. And we're going to start with a clicker question. So I'm going to show it to you all, then I want you to all vote on it, and then we'll talk about it afterwards, OK? So go. So the slide asks you, and this is, by the way, thanks to my colleague Brian Harvey, the most important uses or use of computers in education so far is web search, arithmetic drill programs, word processing, iClicker-like technologies like we have here, like you vote for things, and social networking. And go. So welcome back. Thanks for taking that vote. The answer, and I almost, don't, I almost never read something, but my colleague Brian Harvey has the best quote ever for the response to this. So I want to make sure to get it just right, which is, multiple choice tests have changed what counts as knowledge, this is epistemology, in schools. Open-ended questions were the norm 30 years ago. The kind of knowledge you can report on multiple choice tests is unimportant in the big scheme of things. And what's really important is not what you already know, but how you can take what you know and to apply it to a problem you haven't seen before. Multiple choice tests make that hard. Teaching follows tests. The folks who invented standardized tests didn't foresee how would it affect what knowledge means. I'm going to pause there. How I test, it's just how I test, but no. The unintended implication of technology was that now affects what knowledge means. It's called an unintended consequence of that. So before we go, computers and education, there's a, a, a huge swath of what they can be used for, and they're categorized by Judith Schwartz, an educator, as tools, microworlds, and courseware. Tools are general things that you can use for any service. Microworlds are general but limited to a particular application, and courseware is drill and learning management systems, and you follow exactly what I do. So it's kind of that continuum is how much freedom the student has. Okay. What about MOOCs? MOOCs are great for some reasons, shh, and MOOCs are not so great for some reasons. The reason they're great, it's great if you're isolated. You learn from the best teachers. You find the best teachers in the country, put their lectures online. Wow, they all, everyone gets access to it for free. Awesome. And you're encouraging learning for its own sake. Learning is just out there. There are now more resources for everybody. That's a good thing. What's the bad thing? Right? We always have a balanced perspective on this. Overemphasis on lectures. We know how to do lectures very well. So we overemphasize that, but that's not where the real learning happens. Real learning happens, as it does in this course, with doing it, which is why we have so many hours of you working with the computer and doing exercises. These small lectures are just to give big ideas. That's why I said it's not where you learn the deep ideas, just introductions, motivation, big ideas. Encouraging universities to think of courses as cash cows. Many universities have said, oh, we can just make a lot of money there. And so they've kind of gone in with the wrong reason, at the tail wagging the dog. And not so good at credentialing, because it's really hard to tell if that person is really the person or a bot answering all the questions or their neighbor. So that's a little bit harder, OK? So in summary, computing has that global impact. These are the summary of the three lectures together. Computation has changed the way we think, work, and play. You've seen that before. And our method of communicating, collaborating, problem solving, and doing business has changed and are changing due to the innovations enable, enabled by computing. Oh, that's, that's clear. This picture is of the first cell phone reenactment. The biggest change to your lives is mobile, mobile devices, mobile phones, and that's the, first cell phone, that's the first cell phone reenactment of that. Look at the size of that. We would never go, have been to where we are now if, you, if cell phone technology didn't change. It's changed fundamentally, and that's why it's all in the pocket on the watch and trivial and it's part of your lives now. All right? We'll see you next time. <laughs>